just a quick tutorial for you today on how to swap the mesh of a asset or holdable thing you have for a player at runtime. So to start with, we need two meshes. Now I've gone ahead and fetched some from the Cinti Polygon Dungeon asset since I got that recently. But any two meshes you have will do the trick. Now the first thing you'll need is a prefab to put these in. So we'll go ahead and create a prefab just at our top level here. And we'll call it changeable weapon, for lack of a better word. Now we'll go into this. And I'm going to grab two of the other assets that I want. So over here, we've got, for example, well, let's say we've got a regular axe. And we've got an axe with mines on it. They'll do as good as any. So we'll go ahead and we'll lock those in position. Now you can choose to unpack these from their prefabs, um, but I will probably choose not to unpack them from their prefabs. Simply because that way, if you go and change something in the underlying weapon prefab, those changes will actually still be carried across into your Rec Room Index. And if you've got one that needs to contain multiple things, like for what I'm doing here, um, then this is perfect. So we'll take these and we only want one of them to be visible by default. Depending on how you're doing it, you may even want to have none of them visible by default. But to start with, I'll keep this one visible by default. Now, all you want to do now is take your prefab. We're going to add the Rec Room Object component onto it like we normally do. And what we're going to do is we're going to add an event. But for now, all we want to do is choose Unity Event. I was going to say bull, but we probably actually just want the plain Unity Event. And we'll name this after the axe that we want enabled. So we'll say, this will be for the normal axe, because we are going to want an event for every different smash type that we have. So this one, for example, we'll call normal. And its job, if we hit this little plus button down here, is we want it to activate the normal axe. So that's going to be, we want bool set active. And make sure we've got that check on there. But we also want it to set all of the other ones to not active. So we're going to click add to the list to add another instruction to this event. And we're going to take our nature axe, even though it's already turned off right now. And we're going to go game object set active. And we're going to turn that off. And so now we're going to do the same thing, um, but for the nature axe instead. So we will add another event, just a regular event. And we will call this nature. And we'll see when we, okay, we have nature. And so now again, we'll take our nature axe. This is what we want on this time. And we will go game object set active. And we will check that as active. Then down in here, we will choose, we'll take our axe that we don't want it to be, which is our regular axe. If you're having trouble reading these, you may want to drag out the inspect panel a little bit just so you can read them a bit better. And we'll take this one and we'll have their set active set to off. So there we go, you can see, so this first event will turn on the regular axe subject, and the second one will turn on the nature axe subject. With this setup, it shouldn't be possible for both of them to be present at the same time. So now that we've done that, um, we can go ahead and save our prefab. Now I'll take a brief moment here just to do a shout out to a little project that I'm working on with the wonderful Marisa, the talented Dezo, and the brilliant Jablin. This is a little snow animal crossing -y RPG that we're working on. Current working title is Snowflake Suri, but it's subject to change. 
But if you want to check out some absolutely beautiful artwork by Marisa and hopefully some very cunning circuits and studio work by the rest of us, you should absolutely keep an eye out for this one. Um, but for now, what we want is we want to grab our prefab, which I always put in my underscore projects folder. So we'll go ahead and we'll drop this into the world. And you can see right now, it's just that X. Now, one important thing to do, again, this depends on how many different things you want to put in here. Um, but in this case, in general, it's always a good idea to make sure you hit remake object boards once you've made some changes to your record object component. So go ahead and do that. And now I'm going to go into studio and just hit play. So here we are. No flex or re, and here is our axe. And if you grab out your makeup pen, um, I'll be doing this in advanced creation mode because that's what I normally use. But anyone that you have will do. You can see we've got our normal axe. Um, but if we click on this to execute our nature pen, boom, nature axe, normal axe, nature axe, normal axe, nature axe. And you can add as many different options to this as you like. And it will still perform the way that it is supposed to perform. So there you have it. That's how you swap out the model for a Rec Room Studio object at runtime using circuits and events. Happy building, gamers.